Good morning. Can God move the heart of Ebed Melek? Our reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 7 to 13. Now Ebed Melek, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. When the king was sitting at the gate of Benjamin, Ebed Melek went out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is likely to die from hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded ebed the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he dies. So ebed took the men with him, and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took from there old clothes and old rags, and let them down by ropes into the dungeon and to Jeremiah. Then ebed the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, Please, Put these old clothes and rags under your armpits, under the ropes. And Jeremiah did so. So they pulled Jeremiah up with ropes and lifted him out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Jerusalem is under heavy siege by the armies of Babylon, and ebed Melech is either a eunuch or an officer in the king's house. His name literally means servant of righteousness, or righteous servant. I like it either way. Now, although he's a hungry man who's trapped inside a city that's being starved out by the army of Babylon, ebed Melek's not thinking about that. He's not thinking about his very skinny tummy. ebed Melek is thinking about Jeremiah, the prophet, who's been put down into the bottom of this dungeon. He's heard that the high and mighty people of the city have put Jeremiah down into this pit, and he's concerned that Jeremiah's going to die down there of starvation. So Ebed thinks about this situation a lot, and at a moment in time, he sees the king out at the gate of Benjamin. And I presume the princes, the mighty people in the town, they were not really around at that time. And so Ebed goes and he talks to King Zedekiah. He's going to intercede for Jeremiah. He speaks plainly. He, he identifies what's been done to Jeremiah as evil. I like a plain speaking man like that. Now, this was an invitation to Zedekiah to act on Jeremiah's behalf. Now, you know that Zedekiah struggles to be a decisive king. He, he wavers back and forth over and over again. One thing to know about that, a person with that kind of personality, they tend to keep their options open. And if Jeremiah dies, that'll be a closed option for sure. So Zedekiah commands them to lift Jeremiah out of the pit and keep him imprisoned there, uh, but not down in the pit. So Zedekiah has an opportunity to do some good to Jeremiah. So Ebed does this, and he does good for Jeremiah. He knew he might incur the wrath of these important people, but he did it anyway, because Ebed Melech was a righteous person, and he didn't want to see Jeremiah suffering and dying for no reason. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, please give me a heart soft enough to receive your impressions like Ebed Melech did. I believe that your Holy Spirit led him, you provoked him, you were guiding him, your impressions were upon him, and he felt moved to act on behalf of this persecuted servant of yours. Lord, help, help my heart. Help the hearts of every listener. Be soft to hear your spirit and to act on behalf of those who are being harassed or persecuted. Lord, please use us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. And in Jesus' name, we give thanks to you. Amen. God needs other servants of righteousness like Ebed Melech. Men and women who will take the initiative to do good for others on behalf of the King of Kings. You be one of those people today.